Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about different way to investigate a ransomware file. There's a lot of videos are available which talk about what is ransomware, ransomware series and all that. So I thought it in, in my ransomware series, I'm going to discuss about how to investigate ransomware. Uh, what are the tools are available? Uh, so you get the one theoretical approach about the investigation perspective and you can basically use the same in your operation. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer the LinkedIn profile. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So team, uh, whenever we basically uh, get this information about a particular system got infected with the ransomware or they have encrypted the file or this at system is under the ransomware attack and all that, the first thing we always need to do the discovery. Okay, this is basically called as an initial discovery. So in the initial discovery, suppose when you find some files and all that, you need to first identify what is the original or origin of the file. So here we need to identify how was the file was discovered. Example, is this file was delivered by an email? Someone has used some external pen drive. So let's take example here is we have a system. Okay, so there was an employee who got one pen drive. He plugged the pen drive and through that ransomware, a rat is basically deployed in the system and then remotely hacker hack the system and encrypt the file. Or user receives some email, he download the email from that you know, it the rat was executed and it give a persistent access to the remote system and through that he hacked. So the first thing, whenever we confirm, okay, the system A was infected with the ransomware and ransomware attack was done successfully, we need to identify the source. Origin is basically very important because by this way, you can able to identify the author, you will identify the purpose, you will identify the motive and everything. The second most important thing when you're dealing with the initial discovery is the file behavior. So by the checking the system logs, security logs, you have to see is this file execute automatically or it is triggered by the user. Okay, is there any noticeable changes in the systems behavior after the file was opened. So if you're running any kind of a file integrity monitoring software, you can able to compare against the previous state. So these are the two important things that you have to do in the initial stage to discover the ransomware and their associate properties. Now to understand the process, we have a two way to analyze any ransomware. Okay, so there's a, a ransomware extension file we got in a system. So we have a two way to analyze the ransomware. One is basically called as a static analysis, where we try to understand the ransomware structure and properties. In layman, I can say, suppose this is the file we have. Okay, and it got encrypted. So we do the source code analysis of the file. We do the deep penetration into the file. We see the file structure. And from there, we try to identify the origin and everything. On the second side, we also have a dynamic analysis. Dynamic analysis basically mean I will basically run this ransomware in a sandbox environment. And passively, I'll try to observe the behavior of the ransomware. Okay, so these are the two important techniques we have that we have to follow. Okay, so in order to discuss in detail, let's start with the first part called static analysis. Okay, so you get a better visibility. So when we're talking about static analysis method, it means without executing a ransomware, we analyzing a ransomware properties. Example like whenever we get any file, we always look for the file metadata. Now, what is metadata? Data about the data is metadata. Example, when you create a file, you can see the last access date, last creation date, author name and all that. When you right click on the file properties, that is called as a file metadata. Okay. See, if you're looking for the accuracy, we always start with the static analysis first. So in the, in the file metadata, we look for the file properties. Uh, we basically look for the last creation date. Okay, what is the author? What is the metadata? And we have a tools for that also. Example, one of the tool is called EXIF tool we have. And the procedure is basically what is this, this tool is it extract the metadata from a ransomware executable files. 
And when we use this tool, we look for some important information like when was the last modified. So with the help of timestamp, we get the visibility when this attack happened. We look for the digital signature by which we can able to verify the authenticity of the file from where it got infected. And with the help of exif tool, we can able to identify the location of the file in the system where it is reside. We also look for the size of the file, which can be compared with your known good file. So example, this was the file was encrypted and this was the origin of file that we took from a backup. So we can compare against, you know, what is the current size of the file and what was the old file size. So by this way, we get a visibility. What is the percentage of the size of ransomware is targeted the system. And with the help of last revision of version history and description, we can able to identify the file perspective. So file metadata is always a very good way to investigate any ransomware. Now, second is basically called as a file signature. Okay. So we determine with the help of virus total, there's a website is called as a virus total. Let me check whether it is a known ransomware. So I will upload the uh, one extension of the file in the virus total website and check whether the signature is available for that. If signature is available, we also get the decryptor and by which we can decrypt. So this is the way you can determine if file contain any known malware. Okay. And all. So we use the MD5 sum, we use virus total. We, we generate the hash and we compare against the stored hash value of the virus total website. And if it match and we can easily get the countermeasure. So initially it was used for WannaCry and all that. So that is a, another way to identify the pattern. One of the most effective way to identify the structure of the ransomware. We are not executing anything. We have a file. We're doing analysis of the file. The third way is called as a string analysis. Now I want your two minutes of attention here. In the first, we understand the metadata. In second, we basically use the hash and compare against the known hash value in the websites from which we can able to identify, like, you know, is it already there? So from there, we can also get the countermeasure action plan and everything. But sometimes what happened, we need to know the deep analysis of the file. And this is basically where you do the string analysis, one of the most effective way to investigate ransomware. So string is generally considered a data type which is often implemented as a array data structure of bytes that store the sequence of element. So when you basically do the string analysis, we basically extract the readable strings from the file, which is checked for the suspicious or revealing information. So we have a tool like string is a utility in the Linux and the procedure is basically extract the readable string from the ransomware executable files. So for your information, there'll be a one term has been used is called cryptography term. So cryptography term like they will use a word called AES in the file. Okay, they will use RSA in the file. Okay, they will use a word called encryption. They will use the word decryption. So which basically give insight into the encryption method used. Nowadays we have a ChaCha20 that is a common tool that is used to encrypt which use the RSA and AES. Then second most important thing, we also look for the file extension. Okay, file extension. So list of file extension that are ransomware target for encryption, we will check that. Third, the most important thing, very, very important thing when you're investigating a ransomware, check for the URLs. Okay, URLs of the remote server. Okay, example like this is the hacker and he using one system and through that system, he gain access to the target system. So this is called your command control center. So sometimes what happened in the file, we can also get the information about the IP. Okay. We get the payment voter details. We get the resource communication. So we look for that. Then we also look for the file path. File path is basically where it indicates system files is there. Example, C drive, Windows system 32. So it, it, it can indicate which system file or directory the ransomware is currently interacting. Another important thing, we also look for the registry key. Okay, which basically give the indication of registry modification or check. Okay, we also have one more important thing which is missing here is called as a API calls. API call. So API call is like name of the window API function or other system call that can basically hint a ransomware functionality. So that also we can look for. We also look for keyword like Bitcoin, decryptor, which can also provide more context about the ransomware operations. Is it clear? So these things we have to do. So we can compare the exact string with the known ransomware sample or any indicator of compromise using a threat intel platform. We use also the extractive URL IP or domain to gather more information about the ransomware infrastructure. And then we document the findings 
and we present for the analysis so that is something we do so summary here is static analysis is all about understand the ransomware structure and properties whereas a dynamic analysis is observe the ransomware runtime behavior by network activity and system interaction okay remember one thing while string analysis can provide the valuable initial insight okay the sophisticated ransomware techniques and everything okay but after doing a static analysis only we do the dynamic analysis method so dynamic analysis method is the another type of technique that we use so static is without running a file just analyzing a properties do the deep pen test into the file we analyze the properties but in the dynamic analysis we try to execute that ransomware we try to understand the pattern of the ransomware how it works okay and from there we try to get the understanding so in the dynamic analysis one thing we use is sandbox sandbox is just like a virtualization so example like this is the machine we have we run the ransomware in this and see how it works okay based on a pattern understanding and all that we will prepare the action plan okay why we run in a vm because if we run in a directly system and all that it can infect the entire system that is why we running this in a sandbox which is called as a secure environment so if something is happen we can just roll back and create a new environment so we execute the file in a control environment where we observe the behavior how it works we also monitor the system changes okay i will check the logs of this machine i will check the system logs of the machine so from there we get a visibility when it encrypting a file how it works so i will use the same methods i will try to find the key patterns by which i can able to decrypt that okay or i can i can basically prepare my action plan according to the pattern how it activate is it clear so tool like cuckoo uh, cuckoo or sandbox we have where i will basically execute the ransomware in a isolated environment and we monitor the behaviors that what we do so the ransomware attempt to reach a specific domain they encrypt the file they display the ransomware note this is the passive thing we going to observe okay how it basically establish the connection how it encrypt the files okay so if we capture this activity we can get the better visibility see one technique uh, we have discussed about you know run the ransomware file in a sandbox and then we analyze the behavior by checking the system logs and everything we also have an, one more technique which is called as a process monitoring okay so we use a tool like process monitoring to see the process the file start or interact okay so example like we are using wireshark okay so let's take example this is the vm box we have and this is the file okay so what we going to see is like you know this is basically the suppose called as a c2 center c2 basically mean command and control server it is a remote server that malware infected system used to communicate so normally if we take example if it's a hacker system when he convince the user to install one application it create a reverse connection on this server only and through this server we control the system so when we download any ransomware and all that we'll will will parallelly run the wireshark and we check this file is targeting and connecting with which server ip okay so by this we get the idea about what are the ip addresses we have on which it sending a data what is a possible command to server so we, we can basically block such ips and see to details on a firewall or threat intels so that is also one technique we are using uh, to proactively protect the organization from the further ransomware attacks is it clear so that is called process monitoring so as i said in process monitoring we also monitor the network traffics that's the most important thing we use wireshark or we use tcp dump by which you can capture the network traffic while the ransomware is running and you can observe the ransomware reaching out to which particular ip so you can able to block such ips on your firewalls you can block such c2 servers so that future in future it should not happen again so this is all from my side team do let me know how do you find this video and do let me know shall i make more videos on the ransomware series this is from my side and do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a same topic Thank you good day bye